right here. That's that's a really, really big statement you just made. Welcome to the verdict, ladies and gentlemen. This is where we decide each week what show won in ratings. Now, let's take a look back at ABW show. We had matches like Marty versus Warp Thrower, which was pretty much a barn burner. It was really good. It was a really good, fast-paced match. Here, Sonny, just, just so we can get a fair thing, go to the go to the go to the video on the channel. Just watch like parts that I'm talking about. You can just give your verdict based on that. It's okay this okay. week. A pass because you were busy getting Jake Roberts, which is respectful. Yes. We have matches. I mean, this this show did really good too. And um, all you have to do is go to the end of ABW and just see what I'm talking about. I might also go to the to the video as well just to see. I'm gonna make sure that the music's playing. Wait, am I am I just gonna watch the end of? Yeah, it's playing. It's playing the song. Pretty good. Epic. Can hear your your thing. Yeah, because I was just checking to see if the sound was on, and it is. It's on damn well. Now it's half and half. So. What happened at ABW? The the wild card. The blood. Week two of ABW. Let's see what happened. So, like I said, I mentioned um, Marty and uh, and Warp Thrower. That was a damn good match. Uh, another thing that happened was we saw Corvin Velvet defeat the job in a hell of a match uh, I didn't see Corvin Velvet winning that I really didn't and um, we had a lot of good stories being told a uh, something of a a trick from Mr. Sonic that didn't work his way so he didn't show up we saw Hollywood Alpha Paul and Dwayne Rock versus Syke and Mike Tut the Tut brothers Hollywood beat them they beat Mike and Syke Tut in what I said was the best match of that of that night of that show uh, a match that was supposed to happen between Gu and Nama, but Dudley came out dragging Nama's body, and du uh, Dudley ran to the ring, beat up Gu. Gu got the upper hand to end that segment, uh, which we built got to see mass Gu hype. and Dudley today. Uh, not a match, but we we got to see him brawl. It hyped oh. up their match for next week, which will be a big one uh, in the books. Out of a very to Nama. Uh, unfortunately, Nama was he just didn't wrestle tonight, and that's just how it goes. Uh, I mean, what can you do? It's, uh, it's self books itself, damn it. Um, I mean, the ma I mean, the, the show started with the debut of Hula Yuri, which is the monk who is in his well in his 70s, beating the young Castro Finch in a very impressive debut, one of the most shocking and most invested debuts I've been I've actually been a part of. I mean, Archangel's match tonight was something, but that was different. That was completely different. Uh, that was something I've never... Something, like, completely unique. Yeah, I've that was, never seen a match like that before. That was... That was I'll, like, you like comparing sizes. I'll compare that to Brock versus Cena at SummerSlam 2014 when Brock Lesnar yeah. suplexed him 16 times. Top guy mm -hmm. Cena did not... He looked like Jobber Cena, which was uh, rare. Yep. We saw Marty and Warp Thor. Great match. Uh, me and Joey praised that match highly. Hollywood, The Job, and Corvin Velvet did their thing. Uh, the Goo and Dudley thing. And then the main event was the one thing I was most intrigued by. Because the main event was Jay and Opie, uh, Vice Smith, the best tag team, period, in, in our opinion, going up against MC3, who is the number one contender for the United States title next week against oh God, The really? Job and Corvin Velvet in a triple threat for the U.S. title because both men beat The Job. The job has not won a single match on Mayhem. He won the whole tournament, but is he going to get the job done next week, or is he total fraud? We're going to find out. That's what that's that's what that booking is for next week. But MC3 and Hope Sonic. Now, I believe Mr. Sonic created that as a ploy, putting his son in the main event, trying to injure and take down Jay Vice and Opie Smith, so that when the match ends, Mr. Sonic can cash in his money, his briefcase, his guaranteed that's chance briefcase. It didn't work, dirty. and the and the show ended with Jay Vice and Opie basically calling Mr. Sonic out. The camera pans to the stage and no one is there. Nobody's there at all. Um, and it keeps panning back to them going like, come on! Cash it in! And it goes back to the stage and no one's there. But that is something for 
to be continued next week. We'll see. Will there be a cash in next week? Will Jay Vice even be in action next week? We're going to find out actually very soon after this show's off the air. But oh, then, a very intriguing show. On Wednesday, Payne, it was, yeah, that we, it was uh, better than last week's Mayhem, I'll tell you that. On this week's show, uh, we saw Shade Shice and the Interference in a fast page, pa- uh, fast paced but great match. Uh, the Interference got attacked by Austin Marco, uh, which I thought was um, was good. It, it, it prepares their their main event match next week for the UWF Heavyweight Title. Uh, it's it's just good. It's good booking all around. Warjack and Reverend Speed Show happened as you remember. Rebel Kid came out uh, and helped Warjack. Um, which I believe is mind games. I think he's trying to get Warjack just to feel a little disoriented so that he can hit him at his weakest point and win that title that he didn't win at Bloody Saturday. Uh, good match, though. Warjack, like I said, one of the best storytellers in the business. Quick Draw and Butcher Boy had a great match, actually. Quick Draw showed that he is hard to beat. I- I'm sure, I mean, he's, I'm sure he's, he's beatable, though, as we've seen um, Archangel in the main event. That was the most dominant uh, match I've ever seen in the 2K19 experience thus far. Robin Luther, that was great too because Rebel Kid came out for this one and I believe was playing mind games with Warjack again because he was going for the face. Luther for Shaw, he was teaming with the face but Rob still won and Rebel was looking at him not doing anything like beating him up he was just looking at him and Rob was uh, on the top rope doing his thing and and and, and he, Rebel Kid just let it happen. So those are planting the seeds for what can eventually happen. Inmate McKinder faced the debuting Mfuck Toady in MXL. Uh, really entertaining tag team match. Mfuck Toady showed he belongs. But unfortunately, uh, Inmate McKinder are the smarter tag team. McKinder took out the big man. And they basically cornered Mfuck Toady. Gave him the neck breaking suplex and beat them. Uh, good. I mean, I mean, hell, good in-ring psychology all around. And the main event happened, and that was, uh, holy shit. Because Falcon looked incredible against a guy like, even like MXL in the tournament. And even a guy like Butcher Boy last week, who is bigger in size than Archangel. It shows how inhuman Archangel is. And if he gets a grasp of that UWF title, I don't think he'll ever let go of it. So, when it comes to both shows, when it comes to both shows... They're very different from each other, but which one did it for you this week? Honestly, I it's it feels a little tough because they are just two different experiences, and one is focused on making a scene and making a story, but the other one just got down to business, and I think. I think this week it was all about business for me, so I gotta go with the ABW show. It just, it fulfilled every need on my list of what I wanted to see in the show today. Um, based on what I saw, based on Rebel Kid's interference, based on the interference at the beginning, prepping up their match for next week, uh, the hype up for Inmate McKinder versus Lex Hannibal and Save and Terror next week, um, as much as I'm really intrigued to see what Mr. Sonic has next for Jay Vice next week, as much as I'm excited to see uh, what happens next week to you know a guy like uh, in the United States Championship Triple Threat, will the job lose his title to someone like Corbin Velvet or to someone like like MC3? Uh, will Hope Sonic be on next week's show? Will Mr. Sonic be there? Well, we don't know. Burglar Baron, where is he? Where where is everybody? It's it's good. Uh, but next week, I'm this this show definitely made me more excited to see next week's Wednesday Pain. As much as I'm really excited to see Goo versus Dud, um, I want to see Awesome Marco take on Interference because Interference looks strong. He beat Shade Strist. He did everything. So I'm gonna give it to Wednesday Pain this week. It's up, to, it's, it's up to you, Sanjay Box. I, I don't know. I don't know if you've been studying the. the I ABW haven't show. watched ABW, so I couldn't speak in like detail about it. But to me, that looked like a very intriguing card. I saw. I got to actually witness Wednesday Pain, and I thought it was one of my favorite shows that we've had. I think 
Maybe because I actually saw it, I'm going to have to give it to Wednesday Pain. That makes sense. That means your winner this sure. week, tying with ABW, is UWF in the ratings. Now they are 1-1. One and one, And that concludes the verdict. That concludes Wednesday Pain. That concludes this week's shows. You'll be seeing clips in mass get released as soon as this is over. And we hope you enjoyed both shows. UWF takes the cake this week. What will happen next week? That's not up to me. I mean, kind of. Another thing, UWF, lots of debuts today. Uh, Luther Fischal debuted. M. Fuck Toady debuted. Archangel made his first televised match, uh, not on pay per view. Rob Admiral. No way, Rob. Rob Admiral kinda. debuted. Really good. Really good stuff. Today is just, a, just showing that we're just getting started. Yeah, next week should be. I mean, the next the ne next week's two shows. We're gonna see Goo versus Dudley for the first time. We're gonna see the United States Championship possibly change hands. Those are the book matches for ABW. For UWF, we have a tag team championship match. We have Inmate McKinder versus Lex Hannibal and Saban Terror. Will Saban and Lex do it? We're not sure. And the and we're having a UWF world title match, no holds barred, which means nobody will be at ringside. Will Interference be able to take out Austin Marco again like he did last week? Will he be able to contain that championship, defend it more, and build what he's trying to build? Or will Austin Marco end it quickly, say fuck you, and take back what was rightfully his from Bloody Saturday? We're going to find out. So thank you for watching. Have a good night. And see you next Tuesday, bitch. <clears throat> good night.